there's two things that we are never supposed to talk about on social media. One of them is politics. The other one is religion. I am therefore going to talk about both. So let's look at Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6. It says this, it is, is this not the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and to break every yoke? In this verse, he really addresses some terms that we use in our culture today that we have become very uncomfortable even having the conversation about because of the divisive nature of it. One of them is injustice and one is uh, oppression. And uh, we live in a culture that has taken those words and used them in ways that perhaps scripture didn't intend. When God talks about injustice, he does not put adjectives in front of it. Adjectives like social injustice or economic injustice. If you can take any term and if you add the word injustice to it, it sounds very important all of a sudden. But when it comes down to it, what does God mean when he says that we as Christians or we as his people, when we are fasting, how are we supposed to take care of this issue of justice in the world? What his concern really is, I believe from scripture, is that uh, the law is being applied equally, that the rules are being applied equally but not that the outcome is always going to be equal. We see many times in scripture where outcomes are very different. Outcomes for people who accept Christ are going to be very different from the outcomes for people who don't. And so God is not saying, it, you'd have to suggest that God was unjust, unjust uh, that he was acting in injustice. If the goal of justice is equal outcomes, and the outcomes are consistently uh, inequal, in, in, the, the inequitable, as in the words of our day. So God's concern is that all laws are applied equally, that all rules are, are uh, instigated equally, that there is no favoritism shown for one group over another, but that they are all equally applied. Opportunities are equally given, but not necessarily that the results will be the same. Um, I would just give this one illustration as I, as I bring this time to a close. But Peter and James were two of the three apostles that Jesus was especially uh, close to. Peter, James, and John that he always brought a little further than the rest. And in the book of Acts, we're told that uh, James was beheaded by Herod. And that was the end of his story. It's very unceremonious. There's no major story around it. It just says... Herod had James beheaded, and that's it. Peter then was put in prison because the people seemed satisfied when Herod had uh, James beheaded. Peter was put in prison, and then the people prayed, and God miraculously saved Peter. That's not equity, but it's also not injustice. It's just an example of what I mean. Uh, we need to be very cautious when we hear people talking about injustice or justice in our day that we are not led to think like the world does but let's keep our minds in the scriptures let's keep our minds thinking the way god does what he wants is for us to treat everyone equally to to disperse law and justice equally and uh, to make sure that we are as much as it depends on us that in our working in our business that we are doing everything uh, in integrity and justice Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. We thank you, God, that your word applies in a day that the world is telling us it's irrelevant. These very terms, these very ideas are dividing our culture and even your church in our day. Help us, Lord, to be wise in the way that we divide your word and in the way that we apply it. Help us, as much as it depends on us, to treat everyone equally with the love of, of Christ. And I pray, Lord, that we are known for our, our justice. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day, everyone.